Good evening. Welcome to our second segment of Philippines Uncut. I'm your host, Buddy Kunanen, and our show on Argentina continues in Viva Argentina. And joining us now are, uh, on my right, we have Menchi Gregorio, and she is the Managing Director of Travel Excellence Corporation, which is a general sales agent of Aerolíneas Argentinas. Yes, good evening. Good evening. Good evening and joining her is uh, Mr. Ronald Lim Joseph, or Ronnie, who is the Operations Director of Philippine Wine, Wine Merchants. Yes, good evening, buddy. Welcome, Ronnie, yeah. to Philippines Uncut. Now, let's talk about, uh, in the first segment, we talked with the uh, Ambassador about the, the wonders of Argentine uh, tourism. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to talk about getting there. Yes. And the best course. way to get there is via Aerolíneas Argentinas. Yes. Okay, so tell us about this airline. Um, first of all, uh, Aerolinas Argentinas uh, started back in, in 1950. And then m your next question is how to get to Buenos Aires from yes. here. <laughs> the fastest way to get to Buenos Aires and the rest of South America is actually via the transpolar route. Wow, that which sounds is, far. Which is via, when I say transpolar <laughs> route, it's via Sydney. Okay. So, and then from Sydney, you, you have our three weekly flights from Sydney to Buenos Aires. And then come December, we're going to go nonstop from Sydney to Buenos Aires. Now, let's, let's break this down in terms of hours because uh, Ambassador mentioned a big number earlier. So mm -hmm. let's talk about how, let's say, for Manila, if a traveler would leave Manila and go mm -hmm. to BA or Buenos Aires, okay. how many hours from each point before this person gets to Argentina? Okay. As I said, um, the shortest way to go to Buenos Aires or South America is really via transpolar route. So that means Manila, Sydney, or a Manila, Auckland. Okay, so let's say if it's a Manila, Sydney, um, you can take any of your favorite airlines from Manila to Sydney. That will take you about seven, eight hours. From Manila, Sydney, you, you depart at around evening, and you're arriving, uh, arriving uh, Sydney at about uh, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, and then our flights will welcome you out of Sydney or Auckland to Buenos Aires. Our flights from Sydney to Buenos Aires is uh, about 14 hours. Wow. So oh, that if flight. you're going to have uh, a Manila, Sydney, about 7 or 8, so plus 14 hours, that's the shortest way to plus the Plus the wait, plus the waiting time in the airport. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. all in all, you're looking at how many hours? Uh, easily 35, 30, 35 uh, hours. Less than that. Less than that if it's transpolar, yeah. If it's transpolar. Yes, yes. Wow. How much is the cost? I mean, well, I, I would figure. say um, because of the distance, but uh, there's like a shoulder season or the the basic fares. So to get a good price, we, I would suggest that people travel from here, which is perfect because summer is April in our, in the Philippines. So April till about August is considered um, lean month for that traffic. So the fares could, like last year, we had a promo. Um, we had a Sydney, Buenos Aires, Sydney for as low as $999. That's cheap. Yeah, that's for really cheap. For a 14-hour flight, that's yes, cheap. Yes, that's really cheap. So it all depends, you know. But um, as I said, to get the best buy, travel on a low season. Because from September or October onwards, it's really quite full. And, uh, you know, Argentina being in the Southern Hemisphere, when you talk mm -hmm. about April, May, June, mm -hmm. this is, these are their winter months. So yes. the weather is cool, mm -hmm. agreeable, comfortable. Now, um, I understand that uh, Aerolíneas has just uh, got, got uh, it has an, a new distinction now, mm -hmm. and it's joined a very exclusive club. What is this club? Oh no, um, we've joined uh, the Sky Team. Yes. It's it's uh, a global airline alliance, mm -hmm. you know, one of the major um, global airline alliance, and uh, we're the 18th member of, of of the Sky Team, and that makes. Uh, a big, uh, it has, uh, it's an advantage for, for Aerolinas Argentinas to be, to be part of the Sky Team. And at the same time, also, the Sky Team um, having chosen Aerolinas as their first South American carrier is a major, is a major um, plus wow. for both. Wow, it says a lot about Aerolinas so, yes, Argentinas. Yes, it says a lot about, about yeah. Aerolinas Argentinas, about Argentina as a whole. So it's, uh, it's a total advantage for both uh, organizations. I understand you're promoting uh, tours to Argentina, mm -hmm. and uh, not just general tours, but also specific tours, specific yes. uh, niche market tours. What are these tours like? Well, um, before, you know, people would always think that to, ha to go on a tour, you'd have to uh, be in a group, you know, before you take a tour. But now, um, we are offering FITs to a group, meaning foreign individual tourists, or you can be just one passenger, and you have a guaranteed tour waiting for you in Buenos Aires or any point.
that we operate. And so that would be what kind of tours? That could be either gastronomical tours or wine tours, of course. Which we'll get to you know, in a few yeah. moments. And then for those who love tango, yes, we do have tango oh. tours. We have historical and cultural tours. So um, it's, it's really a, a must-see. They are have there, to check it out. Are there many takers for tours to Argentina? I mean, it's so far away, and it is expensive. It's not cheap. Yes. Are, there, are Filipinos buy, uh, buying into these packages and going Well, I, w I would say from the time we uh, started representing Aerolinas uh, from Manila back in 1997, there has been really a steady increase of travelers to to Buenos Aires and the entire area as a whole. So before, the Philippines would always be just identified with a ship's crew market because uh, most, I mean, the Philippines, uh, they say, um, or more or less provide 30% of the total ship's crew market come from the Philippines. But now, the travelers on board, the people who cruise these luxury liners are going to Buenos Aires. Nice, nice. And now, Let's talk about uh, a major part of your tours, which is, as you said, gastronomical tours. And mm -hmm. when you say gastronomy, it's mm -hmm. good food, good food, good wine. Mm -hmm. Joining us is Ron, Ronnie Joseph. Let's talk about Philippine wine merchants, your outfit. Okay, we've been in the business since 1975. And uh, today we represent uh, most of the wine producing countries. And uh, we continue to educate Pinoy's on how to appreciate wine. We also hold the biggest wine event every November. It's called the Grand Wine Experience. Wow. Yes. And uh, you guys, among the different, your wide variety, your wide range of wines, you guys bring in Argent Argentine wines. Yes, we've been bringing uh, Argentinian wines since uh, the mid-90s. And uh, in fact, we were the first to bring in Argentinian wines uh, to the Philippines. Wow. How did you discover? How did you guys discover Argentinian wines? Oh, um, well, um, I, I'm in charge of research, and um, I do a lot of, um, I, I check out all the, the wines from the New World, and uh, Argentinian, you know, we, we have Chile, so you also have Argentina, Argentina which is, they're, what separates them is the Andes, and uh, Chile is fast coming in as a quality winemaker, in fact, it is very strong here, right? Chile, Arge Chile and Australia, mm -hmm. and okay. Argentina is just right there, and they're beginning, they're a sleeping giant that's beginning to show the quality and what it has to offer. How do the Argentine or, or the Argentinian wines compare to the other New World South American wines, from Chile for instance? I mean, how, how would, what would be the characteristic of Argentinian wines? Uh, Argentinian wines, uh, you see uh, both countries they, um, especially Argentina, have a huge, uh, the, the, what they call this, the population. If you look way back, they're European migrants. 70% of Argentina are, are European migrants. And they've take, taken the winemaking style with them. But originally, it was, uh, what they call this, uh, Spanish. It was the Spanish grape variety that Argentina started with. It was called the Criolla. 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 The yeah. Criolla, but because of this European uh, migrants that have moved into Argentina, they brought in all the great varieties, all the wine making styles, and also an appetite for wine. <laughs> but, 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 but the thing is, the Argentinians, Argentinians way back were contented with just supplying the domestic market, but now they're moving out and, and challenging. What the, what the world has to offer. Let's talk about the wines you, that you bought uh, here in the studio. Uh, can, can you explain uh, this, this, this spread you have before us? Yeah, okay. We um, represent uh, three big names in Argentina. Mo one is uh, Bodegas Trapiche, and the other one is uh, Bodegas Norton, which will be coming in next month, and also uh, a boutique winery called Kaiken. Interesting. Haiken, yeah. interesting, interesting name. Haiken yeah. sounds almost Japanese. Huh? Yes. Yes. And um, okay. Uh, so uh, aside from, with the exception of Kaiken, all the rest are available locally. Uh, already. We, well, they're all available. Yeah. But Norton will be coming in, coming in next month. Okay. Yeah. And and uh, Trapiche has been established in the Philippines since uh, the the mid 1990s. 
All right. Okay. Now, okay, let's talk about the characteristic. I mean, the, this, this the wine from Argentina, do they have a commonality? Like, uh, are they more full-bodied? Are they yes, more acidic? Uh, they're, uh, the wine, the grape variety that's found superstar status in Argentina is the Malbec grape. It was a blending grape. It was a minor grape in Bordeaux. And the migrants have taken it there, and it, it has found superstar status there. Wow. And now in the U.S., it's a big hit. Now uh, the importations to the United States have soared. Okay, it's a full-bodied, dark purple wine. Okay, that's spicy, intense, and, and has a lot of flavor of uh, black ripe fruit. It goes very well with meats. And you know, Argentinians are the biggest meat eaters in the world. <laughs> well, they have the best, the best beef, as I can attest. Yeah. They have and, the best steaks, the best yes. beef. And, wow, and, and, and so are Pinoy's. We're meat eaters. Yes, yes. And uh, we, will, we should be discovering Malbec. You know, that, that's the thing. Um, you know, I'm also a wine drinker. And with Philippine food, sometimes it's difficult for me to pair wine. No? And, and then I end up drinking beer with my <laughs> Philippine food. But if mm -hmm. you have a, a strong, a hard grape like Malbec, I said spicy, full-bodied, it's got a character, then it can, it can, you can actually pair it with you know, a food. Uh, mm -hmm. Menchi, what do you think? Are you a wine drinker? Yes, especially from, from Mendoza. <laughs> I, th that's my favorite. But uh, as, as, um, as you said, really, the, there's, a, there's a distinct quality uh, that you will notice right away yes. when you have an Argentinian wine. You see? So you, we would, especially for, for experts like you, you will, you will uh, even if you're not looking or you, you have not seen the bottle, yes. once you taste it, you will know where it's coming from. That's all I can say. No, the, and then for the, for the food, um, the Filipino food, uh, I would say because, uh, yes, we're, we're meat eaters. And our, when we grill, when we grill our, uh, for example, we call it na babo, you know. And then they, in Argentina, they would always say asado, no? Um, it can it can be done, you know, and they, they have their uh, they have their various blood sausages and different sausages all in one uh, presented to you in a, in a common uh, asado joint in, in Buenos Aires. And here in, in Manila, when, when we have those uh, places for drinking, they have varied meats as well. Uh, so yes. you can do it. So it, really, it is really possible to pair wine and yes, you can pair wine food, with our with our food. own Filipino food. You can do that. And and nowadays, when you go to a Filipino restaurant, there's already a chef. So mm -hmm. we're we're really moving up. And yes. uh, before we used to have only cooks and cucineros, but now you you go to any restaurant, there's a chef, and we have uh, culinary schools around. Yes. And you know, these wines will go very well with Pinoy cuisine. Yes. You know, yeah. with the tajang. And you know our baka, <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. the what we call this lechon baka. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, this is, these are going to pair very well. And yes. even with the white wines. Even the, with the white the wines. Yung panga, the tuna, no? Yes. It's possible. These as well. are all reds, though, what you brought down. Yes. Um, tell us about the Argentine white wine. Okay, our Argentina, they also have all the what they call the international grape varieties. They, 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 the usual Sauvignon Blanc. They also have the Chardonnay. And, and, and uh, they have a, a white wine that's um, indigenous to them. It's called Torontes. Okay, this is the cousin of another grape variety called Malvesia. So Torontes is a grape variety. It's light and um, it's light. It's crisp, and it's a it's it's a white wine. The Argentinian white wine. It's excellent. Wow! No, no. I mean, these yes. names are so foreign yeah. to me because I, you hardly hear these. The, yes. these, these names here usually it's uh, well, Filipinos are, are more used to oh. the the Western That's true. Western variety of, of grape. Yes, and, uh, last year when, when the embassy I had a had a wine um, festival last year in November, so there were of course you were there and there, a lot of people were uh, attended the affair and they were surprised, really uh, with both the red and the white wine from Argentina, you know. So they they, they were really giving a second look and say, wow. So compared to your other New World wines, you would say the Argentinian wines are really making an inroad with Philippine uh, wine drinkers and connoisseurs and that sort of thing. Oh, yes. Uh, and then they make wines in a wide variety of styles, full range at every price point. You know, we ha you have entry-level wines all the way up to the super premium. Wow. 
Do you, do you bring in super premium wines yes, from, from we, Argentina? Yes, we do. Like what, the, one of the wines here, which is the Medaglia. Okay, this that's, Trapiche. The Trapiche Medaglia. Trapiche that's, Medaglia. Okay, that's a, that's a premium uh, Cabernet Sauvignon. Now, when you guys buy these wines, do you guys actually visit the wineries? You go to Argentina, you talk to, to, to the vineyard uh, people and the wine yes. masters. And yes, usually when we bring our wines in, what we do is we visit the vineyard and we sample the wines. Then we, then, then we even get a, a panel of people even here to sample the wines. We get their inputs. These are really vetted. You really make sure you bring in the good stuff. Oh, yes, yes. And uh, it's a happy panel, and everyone gets to preview the wines as well. How much are the entry-level Argentine wines? The entry-level Argentinian wines would be somewhere at about 295 oh, pesos. Very affordable. Okay. Yeah, then it could go all the way up to a super premium, uh, like, like, like the super premium Trapiche wine we have is called Manos, limited edition. That's about uh, 7,000 bucks a bottle. Wow, I mean, this is expensive for a new world wine, huh? But it's a fantastic wine. Are we going to open one now? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, so are, there, are there Filipinos who, who, who spend, because, you know, usually when Filipinos buy wine, and they're going to spend a lot of money, they'll go for, oh, I want a French, Italian, like that. But are there Filipinos who spend this much for new world wine, let's say, from, from Argentina? Oh, yes. Filipinos are very exposed already. You know, like I mentioned earlier, we have culinary schools. Then you have all the, what they call this, the culinary and all the wine, the wine shows on television because of cable. So, so it's really becoming developed, they're becoming more, uh, you know, exposed and yes. more. If you walked in a supermarket now, you will see how diverse the selection is. And the wine market is growing very fast, I understand. Yes, very fast. Compared to when you guys first started bringing the wine in, and yes. now, and you see some people are shifting to wine because of the health benefits from the hard, hard, hard stuff. They're shifting to wine. Yes. Now, um, Manchi, tell us about the the gastronomical tours that you guys mm -hmm. are organizing. What goes? I mean, how is it uh, arranged? For instance, how is it broken down? So, for, for instance, um, let's since we're speaking of the wine. Yes. We have our wine packages that involve Mendoza, so uh, Trevise. Um, the bodegas of Trevisa will also be visited, and when we do that, not only do we have the the, the visits, but the pairing, the, the menus are all pre uh, that goes with it. And uh, when, of course, when you're in in Buenos Aires, uh, Buenos Aires is uh, I would say is is the mixture of all the best of the best of wines. You know, you you will find in 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 Buenos Aires. So. Uh, the restaurants, so we pick out uh, restaurants, no? And then even our tango dinner shows, we pick out a uh, key tango dinner um, uh, hotels affiliated, and they have the pairing uh, from, from the aperitif, everything, till, till their desserts are all, are all a combination of the different oh. wines of Argentina. That's, when we, that's uh, how we package our tours. Because normally, um, normally when when uh, when uh, people just uh, are not aware of it, they would go for the traditional. But since we had the opportunity, you know, to to visit Buenos Aires quite so often, and then so that was an advantage of our office, you know, to to look into their wines, to look into their food, to look into their empanadas. Also goes with the wine. Empanadas. Yes, their empanadas. You have empanadas in Argentina as well. Oh yes. L similar to ours. Similar to our Philippine. Um, I must say better. <laughs> Which wine knows respect, about chicken empanada? With all due respect <laughs> to the Filipino, but uh, they have varied empanadas, and uh, they cook it. They cook uh, either stone cooked, oven cooked, um, you know, so or fried, you know. So, and each each uh, each. I would say they have chicken, they have vegetables, they have all of these herbs, you know. So it's a common, it's a common welcome food for the Argentines. Nice, when they, nice. when you, when they receive you, when they receive you in a, in a banquet, either government or private, the wine is there, the cheese and the empanadas. Excellent. That would be the, normally, and even if you go to um, the their estancias, you know, their estancias is is, is uh, worth going. The varied. Estancias all over the country again. The wine and the empanadas go with it. Well, I don't know about you guys, but, but I'm hungry already. <laughs>
Anyway, uh, Menchi, thank you for coming to show Ronnie. Uh, before we go, would you like to say something uh, to the viewers? Oh, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you for having us and for featuring Argentina this evening. And uh, I'd like to invite all of you uh, to come and visit Argentina and the rest of South America. People would always say it's far, it's ex expensive, but um, you see, nothing is too far right now, you know. I mean, the flights, uh, we have varied flights going into Buenos Aires. You can choose to fly with us, and however, if you choose not to, again, if you fly into Buenos Aires on another airline, the moment you step into Buenos Aires, you will see Aerolinas uh, Argentinas again because we're the only one that can offer um, the Argentine Pass that allows everyone to go in different parts of Argentina for a minimum of 70 um, U.S. dollars. And it's like a visa. It's like a visit USA fair. And just in case you don't fly on Aerolinas, then we can extend to you what we call the South America Argentinian Pass, which is again affordable. So it is affordable to get to Buenos Aires. And, and it's worth the trip. Definitely. Yes, it is worth the trip. I also would like to, um, it is the only country that you would always say the land of varied experiences. You know? Why? Because um, in a two and a half radius flying time from Buenos Aires, you have, you, everyone would be um, experiencing varied climate varied um, landscapes, and that is, that is the only one. You can never find that in any country. So you have a desert, you have the Antarctica in the south, then you have the Pampas, you know, you then, and so on and so forth. So it's worth visiting Definitely worth Argentina. Trip. Ronnie, quickly before we go. Okay, uh, Trapiche wines are available at all Ralph's, Ralph's Wine and Spirit stores. They're also available in supermarkets. And uh, don't miss the Grand Wine Experience, November 16, Friday, at the Marriott Hotel. Over 500 wines, and all the Argentinian wines will be featured there. And uh, the food will be wall-to-wall -to, -wall to pair with all the wines. We're definitely going to be there. Thank you, Ronnie. Thank you, Menchi. Thank you very much. And we're going to feature Argentinian wines and gastronomy and your tourists in the, way, in the days and weeks to come as we promote Argentina. Thank you. Thank you very much. Guys, I hope you learned a lot about Argentina and Argentine wines and food and tours on our show, Viva Argentina. See you again next week here in the show where we talk about what matters to you because you matter the most. We'll see you next week.